Greetings, dear chess fans and experts. This is Fiend Master Max Omariv with you. Today, we'll have a look at the game that used to go viral on the internet, the game between Magnus Carlsen and Wassil Ivanchuk. During this game, Wassil Ivanchuk jumped up in his chair in surprise, and Magnus ran out of the tournament hall in anger. The game was played on the World Blitz Chess Championship 2015, when Carlsen was the king, smashing everyone, his rating in classical chess was 2,872, and of course, he wanted to consolidate his success by winning the World Blitz Chess Championship. Before we get to this game, I recommend you subscribe to our Telegram channel by following the link in the description. The opponents are ready for the fight. Magnus has prepared some water, because he expects it to be a heated battle. They shake hands, and it's on! d4, knight f6, and bishop g5, the Trumpowski attack. No, it's not named after Donald Trump, who again intends to run for president. c5 is played by Ivanchuk. Magnus takes on f6, ruins the structure, and moves the pawn to d5. After queen b6, b2 hangs, so he goes queen c1 and f5, blocking the move e4, and also opens the way for his black squared bishop. Wants to take him to the long diagonal. The world champion strengthens the center, then he wants to move the knight to c3 and generally control the host situation. d6, knight c3. The knight moves to d7, wants to move to e5, and then press on the c4 pawn. This pawn will be an object for attack, and so the champion thinks about how to develop his pieces, either e3 or g3. He needs to develop the white squared bishop somehow. He chooses the second option, plays g3. This is useful from the point of view that there are no problems on the g-file. Bishop g7 is played by Wassil Ivanchuk. He just develops, prepares castling, and on occasion is ready to slap the knight on the c3 square. Now by the way, it's not that comfortable for the knight to retrieve because b2 will be in danger. Knight f3. The world champion develops the piece. He's preparing the castle. On occasion he can play h4, attacking f5. Still, this pawn is also weak, but it is easy to defend. The knight will retreat and the white squared bishop will control it. What should Ivanchuk do? He thinks for a moment and plays knight f6. He just opens the way to the bishop, wants to bring it out and maybe take a long castling. In this case, the knight is ready to move to e4. Knight e2 is a move to prevent knight e4. Magnus did not like this invasion because he wouldn't be able to take that with a c knight because of bishop b2. However, knight e4, captured. We can't take it right away because of bishop e2, so Magnus plays bishop g2. Now the pawn is under attack. Wassil Ivanchuk thinks what to do next. Play either f5 protecting the pawn, or bishop f5, or go for the attack queen b4. The c4 pawn's attacked, castling, and the c4 pawn drops off. Magnus was ready for this and so he instantly responds with bishop takes e4. He double checked some options. It makes no sense to take on c3, because after queen c3, the h8 rook hangs, so black can't take the e4 bishop. Accordingly, Ivanchuk should elect some other ideas, and not just win pieces. He begins to lag behind in time. As you can observe, the clock is displayed in close-up so that you can watch the time better, rather than peering at the edge of the board. So what should he do now? After bishop e4, Wassil Ivanchuk plays h5, trying to attack the h-file. But Magnus immediately prevents this. He plays h4. This is a very logical move. Now it's necessary to continue development, because it's impossible to attack without all pieces. Wassil Ivanchuk thinks where to develop his bishop, either on d7 or on h3 with tempo. He chooses the g4 square attacking the e2 pawn. Magnus doesn't think much. He plays rook e1. Know how fast he plays. He's ahead of Wassil Ivanchuk by a minute. The time control is 3 minutes plus 1 second increment per move, but the time gap is still decent, so he needs to move faster. Hurry up. He castles queenside. We see that Wassil Ivanchuk is hesitating. He holds his hand over a piece, and then he takes a long time before he makes his final touch, because there's the touch move rule. If you touch a piece, you have no other options but to move it. So what do we do now in our game? It seems that we can take the knight on c3 and then take the bishop, because the h8 rook is safe. But that's an illusion, because on bishop takes c3, cold-blooded retreat g2 will follow. And the bishop won't be able to retreat, because the queen will hang, and that means that the bishop's still safe. The question arises, what should Magnus do? He wants to attack the black king. He needs to prepare the attack, play either a4 or rook b1 and b4, which is what the world champion does. He wants to open up the b and c files and press the opponent's monarch with heavy artillery. King b8 is a logical move when castling long. This way the a7 pawn doesn't hang, plus you go off the c-file. This is a useful move, especially when you don't have much time on the clock to think. Magnus also moves his bishop away, just in case. He accidentally hits a pawn, but he corrects it and does everything by the rules in his own time. But what should Ivanchuk do now? 
The most elementary moves are over. He needs to choose a specific strategy. He still wants to attack the king, so he must somehow bring the rook to the battlefield. See, again, he plays unsure again, but he moves this h rook to g8. The other rook may go to c8 or f8, and Magnus plays faster, queen e3. You can see he's easily calculating everything. He attacked the e7 pawn, by the way, and also connected rooks. Wasil Ivanchuk has no desire to give away his pawn, so he plays bishop f6. h4 may be in danger somewhere. Knight e4, attacking the bishop. Bishop d4, a counterattack on the queen. Where do we retreat to? Queen d2 is played by Magnus. And this gets Wasil Ivanchuk thinking. On one hand, he wants to play f5 and f4, ram the g-file, but it weakens the e6 square, and also the knight will have the beautiful g5 square. That's why the f5 move doesn't work good at the moment. And Wasil Ivanchuk gets all excited. Queen takes a2, he takes the pawn, and it would seem that the a-file opens up, which is very dangerous for the black king. But in reality, it's more of a mirage. The d5 pawn may get in danger. On rook a1, the b2 queen will hang. And here Magnus thinks how he should punish him. For now, queen f4, attacking the f7 pawn, just in case. On occasion, knight takes c5 will threaten if the bishop moves away. Rook f8 played, and b4 opening up the b-file right away. Of course, Vasil Ivanchuk doesn't want that, so he first plays bishop e5. And on queen e3, he plays c4. That's it, the file is now closed, you can sleep easy. Also, the black bishop controls the a1 square. The e5 bishop has just a great position. It is in complete control of the situation. What do we do now? Knight c3. Magnus overlaps the action of this bishop plus attacks the queen, then wants to play rook a1. Queen a6, he moves it closer to his king, and Ivanchuk has 18 seconds on the clock. Magnus sees, of course, that his time is running out. He wants to confuse Ivanchuk, play harder, but the problem is, is that on rook a1, queen b6 follows with exchange of queens. This, of course, is not in the champion's favor. And judging by his thoughts, he doesn't like the position. When everything is good, moves are made instantly. But here Magnus realizes that the situation is getting out of control. The opponent has a powerful pair of bishops, an extra pawn, and no attack as such. In fact, black has the advantage. Magnus thinks about how to muddy the waters, especially when the opponent is under time pressure. Queen d2 to get away from the exchange in advance. Ivanchuk plays rook c8, protecting the pawn just in case, and e3, the diagonal is clear. Bishop f5 and rook a1. That's it. Doubling starts on the a-file. Rook a4, then he wants to play rook a1. Here, on bishop d3, he plays rook a1. The a7 pawn hangs, so a6. How to continue the attack? The world champion doesn't see that. He plays b5. If he plays b5, the pawn will be captured, although this is generally possible, but he plays bishop f3, attacking the h5 pawn and wants to tighten it up. Rook g8, king g2, protecting the g3 pawn. But the king is not the best defender. f5. Ivanchuk wants to open up the f-file and ram the position with f4. Magnus tensed, he's got 35 seconds left under the clock against Ivanchuk's 15. He does not know what to do, decides to take a pawn, it will come in handy. Rook f8 and b5, beginning of a decisive counter-offensive. It seems that BA threatens and the black's position crumbles there, but Ivanchuk plays f4. He does not pay attention to the white's attack, because his attack is more powerful. All the pieces of black, two rooks, two bishops, and the queen shoots on the diagonal. So Magnus plays EF to eliminate that pawn, and on bishop f4, queen e1 is a tightening move. But it doesn't stop Ivanchuk. He has seven seconds left, and his hand is reaching for g3. Four seconds on the clock, he can't decide, but plays bishop takes g3, and on fg, rook f1. Hard invasion! Magnus doesn't know what to do. Here it seems that he can remove the queen, and he's up a pawn. He thought Ivanchuk was confused, but after queen g1, Ivanchuk even jumps up in his chair. And this moment went viral on the internet. Magnus blunders made in two. He gets mad, of course. It's understandable. After all, his position wasn't bad. Let's check it. Instead of queen d2, he could have played queen takes f1 just to eliminate this rook, and white has a lot of pieces for queen. Let's see. They have a rook and two miners for the queen. That's more than enough equivalent. Yes, black still has the initiative, but overall the position was closer to equality. After that bitter defeat, Magnus escaped the tournament hall and practically ran out into the street, driving away a reporter from a Norwegian channel who was following him. They say, why the hell are you following me? And I recommend you to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell button. Also give this video a like and tell me in the comments whether you want to see more of these retro blitz games.
Keep playing and studying chess, and I'll see you very soon.